So there are lots of crazy skills in Forspoken that eventually you'll want all of, but in the early levels you'll need to focus on a few key abilities that will make your life much better. In this video we'll talk about the best perks, game changing effects and hidden powers that the game doesn't even tell you about. Now one of the first upgrades you'll want to grab ASAP is called Shimmy and this is an upgrade for your traversal. This basically lets you accelerate to even higher speeds than by default by simply pressing the jump button at the right time as you run. You find this by the way at the Mulberry Fount of Blessing right here in the middle of the Prainos region as you make your way to one of the story bosses but you can also pull up the location by hovering over the icon which is going to open up that map. To use it, simply press jump as you run and once Frey lands, wait for her to do one or two steps before pressing jump button again to do kinda like the skipping animation that gains you a lot more speed. The map is huge and you'll definitely feel the difference, plus this animation is really awesome to look at. Another thing to note is that this skill consumes quite a bit of stamina, but if you complete its spellcrafting challenge, you can make it gain stamina for you instead. To do so, simply visit any safe house and interact with the bookshelves, especially after unlocking that ability around chapter 4, and it doesn't take too long for you to complete its challenge. It's totally worth it, even more so because you can use it strategically in combat, so you can regen stamina and maybe use it for other spells, plus you'll always want to be on the move anyway. Later on, once you get the zip from the fire magic line, I also recommend completing the spellcrafting challenge for that too. This removes the stamina cost completely, so you can grab onto orange crystals or other surfaces without having to worry about falling. This is also the way to reach some of the initially inaccessible areas by the way, so until around chapter 5, don't worry about it too much. Finally, the remaining third traversal upgrade that I would say is mandatory is the Soar ability from the Fire Magic Tree line. This lets you have a second wall jump, which comes in handy if you want to climb very tall buildings or walls, which you will all the time, so yeah, you're gonna want to get this at some point. You can simply head over to the Rosewood Fount, not too far from the city hub, right here on this side of the map, and you'll find it in the middle of the field that was also playable in the demo. Its upgrade is also pretty nice, it improves stamina recovery and it also doesn't take too long to complete, so the next time you're close to a wall you can just double press the button again and you can perform that second jump. But at the start you only have phrase magic which gives you these earth elemental attacks. I'm not going to lie, eventually this ended up being my least used of all of the skill trees. But early on one ability was pretty strong and that was the burst shot, provided that you play with it in a certain way. So burst shot has some of the best damage and AoE if you upgrade it especially to rank 3. And it's an excellent choice, especially if you combine it with the parkour skip animation trick that I mentioned in the previous video. So for those who didn't see that video, you can skip the first two charges of any animation and go straight into the final stage if you just use that after any parkour attack. And since you want to be on the move constantly to avoid damage, you can simply just run or jump, do a quick parkour attack and then immediately hold that button to charge right to level 3 and then unleash it on any enemy. Obviously the game lets you convert some of the skills back into mana, so you can always experiment with some of the other options from the skill menus. But once you've unlocked Sila's red magic and get access to all of these cool fire attack skills, the game becomes a lot more interesting. The first and best perk here in my opinion is definitely Blast Slice, especially if you get it upgraded to level 3. By default, this skill has a powerful ranged attack, but also a secret devastating interaction that the game doesn't really make obvious. So by default, if you just charge the blast slice, you throw this spear that impales the target and causes an AoE explosion around it that deals damage to surrounding targets. If you bring it to level 3, it deals even more damage, travels way further, and also the AoE is much larger. But there's a second way of using it which causes Frey to do this very high leap and then descend with a powerful ground slam that also causes multiple spikes to impale enemies from below. To pull this off, you just have to make sure you unleash the skill while mid-air. It doesn't even matter what height it is, as long as Frey's feet technically don't touch the ground. 
So the easy and slower route is to just charge up the skill and then jump and then quickly unleash it while mid-air, which automatically does that second secret attack for you. But the better and much faster variant, which you will want to master, is to start with the jump instead, do a parkour fast attack, this lets you automatically charge into level 3, and then quickly unleash all of it in a split second while still mid-air. If you pull this off successfully, it should look something like this, it also lets you completely avoid any of the incoming damage, plus the resulting spikes that come from the ground will also prevent enemies from hitting you. The same trick can be used with other similar fire spells such as for example the arc slice, by default this is a pretty decent one as it covers a nice area around you with some good damage. But if you apply the same trick here, the blast slice while jumping, this now causes a different slam attack that also unleashes a very long wave of fire assuming you have upgraded this to level 3. But between these two I just prefer the first one since it also avoids most of the damage. On top of this, there's also Prav's Water Magic, which I know technically speaking comes after the first half of the game, but there's one skill here that I really loved and I recommend unlocking the Cluster Bolt right away to level 3. If you apply the trick I told you about earlier, you can skip all the charge animations here and go straight to the third charge to unleash it in a massive area. Cluster Bolt especially is great at its level 3 upgrade as the area it covers is much bigger, it deals even more damage and that damage is also constant so it's great against slow moving targets or large groups of enemies. It does however fall short against enemies that tend to move a lot so do keep that in mind. Now for support spells early on I found the best to be right here in the top left of Frey's magic line as this gives you access to a ranged, a cleanse and a damage prevention tool. The most useful of course being the last one called the screen which surrounds you with stones that severely reduce most of the incoming damage. Couple this with some of the pretty long duration that it has, this definitely makes a difference in combat early on when you might feel a bit squishy. Leech is also a pretty decent one since it cures all poison, this one is one of the most damaging effects in game especially on the second map so taking it off quickly can definitely be helpful. Plus the dispersed flower you get by default anyway is great at extra AoE range damage as enemies can't even attack it. For the remaining support spells in the other tree, it doesn't really matter just grab whatever you find useful as most of them do have a use in combat. Maybe not before grabbing at least one upgrade before that, which is going to be for your surge magic. Yes, these will cost at least like 75 plus mana points, but are totally worth it and the damage you get is very high for each of the levels. But moving on, surprisingly, crafting also has a few related skills in each of the magic lines and it will let you improve certain aspects of your gear if you get them. One of them is Amplify in Sila's magic and I would say one of the most important early on, especially since it lets you improve the magic bonuses that you have on your cloaks. This includes all the four separate ones for each of the four different lines. Magic bonus is by far the biggest contributor to your damage in Forspoken for each of the specific spells under that, so this is why you will want to boost it as much as possible to become even more efficient. Its spellcraft challenge is also really good, increasing the upper limits of the points that you can add, so you can go with at least 50, probably even more. Another one would be Fortify, this one doesn't even cost mana points, but you do need to have unlocked Prov's magic later on in the game, and then grab the skill from the Lilac Fount right here at the start of the Visoria region. If you're struggling with defenses, this lets you upgrade that on the cloaks and the necklaces once you get it. There's also the variant for HP upgrades in Phrase Magic, but this one will cost quite a lot of these points, over 100, so it's something that I would spend a lot later in the game, but it's useful to improve the HP on necklaces. Totally let me know down below in the comments if there's any other skill that you found very useful or something else that you also recommend early on if you did manage to play for Spoken. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video at any point, a thumbs up on it would be great. Also, if you subscribe and activate that notification bell, it would really help the channel out. And I'll see you guys in the next video.